One of the first things that the independent African nations did was to form an organization called the Organization of African Unity. The purpose of our organization of Afro-American Unity, which has the same aim and objective, to fight whoever gets in our way, to bring about the complete independence of people of African descent, and bring about the freedom of these people by any means necessary. What a time to be alive for real. It's been quite an interesting two weeks with so much happening here on the continent. And of course, we cannot forget what our brothers and sisters did in Alabama. Ooh, 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 ooh. See, let me tell you. The way my heart, they do me, they come see. <laughs> it's like somebody sprinkled sugar on top of it. Because... I say for two weeks now and counting, my people home and abroad just they give them basbus. My people just they give them water, water. My people say, who not put his sumonian for where container you go collect? My people say, if you do anyhow, you go see anyhow. <laughs> my people say, enough is enough. We are tired. Do y'all see what's going on in Africa? Do y'all see what's going on in Africa? I'm proud of them because they black like me. Okay, they're brown, whatever y'all trying to, y'all know what I mean. Y'all know what I mean, so stop stop with the wordplay because they're black like me. It's finally good to see some strength in their legs. Stand up! And they've been standing up. Excuse me. And I am just so proud. I am so happy to see it. This should have been happening. But they're kicking them people out their country. They're kicking them people out their country. So starting off, Nigerians, not to be confused with Nigerians, kicked France out of their country. This made headlines. I'm sure the majority of us have heard this already. And um, Africans were so excited. We are still very much excited. Mali too had done the same thing. Burkina Faso too had done the same thing. So there was a coup in Niger. The former government was overthrown and taken over by the military. When the military came in, they, you know, kicked France out. And of course, you know, France isn't exactly very excited with this news because now um, three countries are out of her grip. So, of course, the President Macron came out talking about how, oh, we need to protect France's interest in Niger, right? And um, which is very audacious, as you would expect from a colonizer. I'm talking about you want to protect your interest in another man's country. Protect your interest in France. But of course, you know why they are doing this. You know why Macron and, you know, the French government is doing this. France literally depends on their former colonies to be what they are today. France had attached itself to its former colonies just like a parasite, a leech would attach itself to a host and it has been sucking away at its former colonies, just milking them dry and leaving basically nothing for the people in those countries and now these countries are fighting back and taking control of their countries once more. Then we go to South Africa where we saw the political party EFF, Economic Freedom Fighters, recently celebrate their 10 years anniversary and they did this in a stadium and this stadium was packed with a hundred thousand people you know celebrating julius malema the leader of the eff was also very much present for the celebration he was at the stadium and he led the singing of the struggle song kill the boa which caused a lot of outrage on the internet <laughs> Alliance, shoot to kill the mother, kill the poor, the farmer, kill the poor, the farmer, brr, pa, pa, brr, pa, pa, attention. Since EFF stands anniversary and this video surfaced and started making the rounds on the internet, many have said jokingly that the video gives the whole setting, you know, the stadium, the crowd, Mr. Malema up there singing, that it, the whole thing, the vibe is giving a Beyonce's, <laughs> Beyonce concert. And now that they said it, I cannot unsee it, it's just fun. But there is also the other side, which is the outrage I spoke of earlier because a lot of, you know, white people 
who like to push propaganda and fear into the hearts of other white people so they struggle song as i saying oh this is julius malema again they do this all the time um they said this is julius malema calling for black people to go out and on alive white people which isn't what the song is about because context really matters this is a struggle song that came from during colonization apartheid and all of that and there are a lot of struggle songs across the continent and uh, yes south africa too has has struggle songs right this song is a struggle song and it goes way back like i said and it's in no way shape or form a song that is sung to encourage black people to go about unaliving white people like the white people who are spreading propaganda about the struggle song that goes way back way back it's painting it to be or are painting it to be side note julius malema has gone to court because of this song they took him to court talking about oh you are encouraging black people to go about unaliving white people and he came out of that court victorious because <laughs> that's not what the song is about it's a struggle song and it has a different deeper context a different deeper meaning to it and it's in no way shape or form about we want you guys to now go out and be savages and alive in these people on the street. That's not what it's about. Alema made a statement during his court case with Afri Forum. One of the things he said is that if your interaction with black people is that of them being your domestic worker or the cashier or the petrol attendant, and that is the extent of your social interaction with them, then you can be ignorant enough to believe that black people cannot differentiate between a struggle song and an instruction to actually unalive people. And this argument is no more than propaganda because there's no logic to it and we really need to start ignoring it. If more than 80% of the population wanted to unalive 7% of the population, you know what I mean? So it really doesn't take much critical thinking for you to realize this is all just noise. And there was comparison saying, well, then the old apartheid flag shouldn't be hate speech. You mean the one under which genocide took place compared to a song sung in protest? These white people who are spreading this propaganda about this song and trying to, you know, instill fear in the hearts of white people because, you know, that's what they do. They constantly want white people to be scared because it's only when these people are scared that they'll be able to control them. It's only when they have these white people who are scared for no reason that they are going to be of benefit to white supremacy. That's it. Black people are not barbaric savages who go about unaliving people. No. We know who does that. It's not, it's not these ones. <laughs> so all that's being said, while this song isn't a song to encourage black people to go about unaliving white people, the song is about encouraging black people to stand on their squares, to stand 10 toes down and fight for what they want, to stand and fight for their liberation to stand and fight for their freedom, to stand and fight for what is rightfully theirs. And that is what black people are doing now moving forward. So they can try to twist and turn it into what it isn't. They can try to ban the song or trust. It's already in here, in our hearts, <laughs> where it matters. That is where we're fighting from now. This is what is driving us. It's in here. And then everything came full circle like this with the Alabama boat brawl. My goodness. My goodness. Yo, Julius Malima sent that chair to America. You are not fooling me, brother. Julius, you are not fooling me, brother. I see you. <laughs> now, I know I joke a lot on this thing, but think about the timeline. Everybody was all over Twitter talking about that chant that Julius Malima did at the EFF rally. Then you know who was mad about it and they said he was calling for genocide and all these things. Then no longer than a week later, we in Alabama fighting, smacking people with a chair. Now, if you remember right before the fight, there was a sister that was doing a ceremony for the ancestors. And I think we channeled some. I'm just saying, that chair looked like it had the spirit of Ubuntu. The way he was smacking people with that chair, that was payback for apartheid. The way that chair was knocking people's lights out, it's definitely been through low shedding. See, something definitely was in the air. Something have shifted in the spiritual realm. It was back to back, my people were doing ish. 
back to back my people standing from the, for themselves back to back my people making moves Just two, three hours before all of that, the bull situation happened. And our people came out victorious. We went into this battle and we won. And we have been winning and we would continue to win. You remember that video where the woman said, you better be glad black people want equality and not revenge? Well, Alabama. You know, the reason I think that we're so enthralled with that is not the general TMZ and world star kind of lust for violence that happens in these Internet streets. What it is, is that black people are realizing and have realized forever that the only reason this nation and most of the colonized nations on this planet can hold their heads up of what, as what they deem to be not third world country is because of our grace, dignity and continue to press them to understand that we are intrinsically connected on this planet. Our grace, our dignity, our elegance, our astute choices and how we deal with the violence, the holocausts, the multiple infringements against our humanity and right to survive is a testament to our beauty, our essence, our essential need to be here. So when you watch this video of a black security guard telling a group of white people that they were parked illegally, get jumped, and black people who don't know each other come to each other's aid to stop this jumping and eventually lynching or murder on the dock, and a dock that turns out to be historically an enslaved African auction block where they ripped families from one another and sold them into slavery. In this climate where someone is talking about the benefits that we face from slavery, we have no choice but to rejoice in the beat down that we saw. You want us to stay and say nonviolence. You want your celebrities to say, oh my God, that's not the way, but it is the way. We now know and have always known that the only way that anything has ever changed in this country is through violence. That's not the first choice. We've been asking, we've been asking nicely, politely, hell, Barack Obama was in office and y'all yelled the N-word at him because he wore a beige suit. We now know the jig is up. So when we watch that, I think that we collectively felt a catharsis of release through finally, finally, there was a just fight that was hand to hand and we saw what happened hand to hand. And what we know historically is that had you not had your gunpowder, had you not had your weapons of mass destruction, that these hands you could never beat. And I know white supremacists are scared because if we watch that and we decide I don't want a Mercedes, I want freedom. Y'all in trouble. Until everybody realizes it's all of us or none of us, the beatings will continue, babe. And I think what really made this whole Alabama situation like viral and different and black people globally was like yes yes it's like we saw physically for the first time us going into such a situation and we we coming out victorious because historically it has been different historically fights like this starts and we hear sad news and we start saying prayers and we start crying and we start going on marches and we start protesting and asking for justice but this time around, we said enough is enough. We stood 10 toes down and we fought and we won. And oh my goodness, the chair. The chair. <laughs> and everything came full circle in agreement with both the physical and the spiritual. All of this happening right now reminds me of a particular video from Malcolm X where he was talking about how a time like this would come that there will come a time when black people wake up and become intellectually independent enough 
to think for themselves, as other humans are intellectually independent enough to think for themselves, then the black man will think like a black man, and he will feel for other black people. And this new thinking and feeling will cause black people to stick together. And then at that point, you'll have a situation where when you attack one black man, you are attacking all black men. And this type of black thinking will cause all black people to stick together. And this type of thinking also will bring an end to the brutality inflicted upon black people by white people. And it is the only thing that will bring an end to it. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. I must tell you, I am so, 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 so excited. It has been celebration galore for me these past two weeks, and I look forward to more celebrations and more wins. But of course, I do want to hear what your thoughts are. Let me know down below in the comment section. But before I exit this video, I want to say, please, please, and please, I am so sorry I went MIA on you guys. I went on a very needed break <laughs> and um, I'm sorry I did not tell you guys first and um, moving forward if I intend or need to go on a break I would be another background bill <laughs> I would be letting you guys know I'll see you in the next one bye bye look at mighty Africa 3.18 percent population growth you understand look at the Caribbeans down here all right 0.86 but look at north america 0.45 you understand caribbeans is almost growing population wise as fast as asia that should tell you something pretty soon the earth is going to return as it began black and everybody knows that this is why everybody wants to be friends with africa this is why everybody's flocking to the motherland to stake a claim this is why the chinese released a report not too long ago saying that their ancestors lineage trace back to Africa because in about a hundred years they're going to say they're African too mark my words this is the future our population after it's been gone through atrocities slavery constantly held down blah 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 we still flourishing you can't stop us because we're not just powered by the mind body and soul we powered by the sun homie <laughs> the thing that kills most of y'all loves us yeah this stuff y'all told me was a curse is a blessing has always been a blessing ain't it beautiful yeah it's beautiful africa is the future i told y'all africa is the light black nations will rise we were on top before you understand this ain't something new we were there before all we waiting for is time the world will be ours again mark my words